Hello everyone, good to see you again today. Um, back with session three in our first book here, uh, Following Jesus in Baptism is what we're going to be talking about tonight. The act of baptism is the corporate affirmation of the transformation that has already taken place in one's life. Uh, you know, last week we talked about Jesus being the central figure in human history and the most important person who ever lived. Uh, he was both fully human and fully God, and which is why He alone can provide salvation for all people. And so that's what we talked about most last week and making sure that He is the central point in our life, the cornerstone as we talked about. He should be our starting point uh, for everything that we do Is our should be our focus on Him. Uh, before we get started tonight talking about baptism though, we do want to go to the Lord in prayer and um, just thank Him. I always want to start with just thanking Him for what He's done for us. Um, as we say every week, He's done enough already for us to praise Him for eternity. And then He continues to bless us all the time. And we hopefully we're realizing those blessings, uh, seeing each and every day uh, what God is doing around us, what He's doing for us, and what He's keeping us from at the same time. And uh, always the providence of God is what we call that. And uh, just making sure we do give Him the correct praise uh, that's due Him for all those things. Um, ask Him to help us to understand what we're talking about. Especially tonight as we're going to be talking about this ordinance of baptism. Help us to really understand the significance and the weight of that idea, what it is on a Christian's life. It's not in the place of baptism, but it comes along behind it as a strong affirmation and help us to understand just what that means to us and pray that He'll continue to be with us in all we do and we'll continue to seek His will in all we do. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come thanking You so much for Your Son, Jesus, who died and gave His all so that all can have salvation through Him. Lord, help us tonight as we're studying about baptism. Help us to really fully understand the significance of what that means uh, for us as we proclaim our life for you. Uh, Lord, help us. Give us understanding and wisdom that we need. Give us just what we need, God. You know what we need, and we come asking that you would give that to us so that we could further our knowledge of the Scripture and of your plan and the works that we should be doing. And we'll be sure and give you all the honor and glory and praise. For it's your name we pray. Amen. There aren't many people who don't appreciate a good holiday. I'll admit I'm one of them. I enjoy having a, a, a holiday to celebrate. I really do. Um, in today's world, the best holidays are the ones that kind of combine a celebration or an event um, with the idea and symbolism where you're not just saying, yay, this is Labor Day, and then you don't do nothing really to celebrate it. Uh, something that actually uh, causes you to have a, uh, an event happen or a celebration happen. Um, these are the holidays that encourage people to commemorate important moments, bring things back to memory for us and that kind of stuff. Uh, one we think a lot about is Thanksgiving, one that Abraham Lincoln uh, proclaimed during the middle of the uh, Civil War, actually, that uh, would be the fourth Thursday in uh, November, that we would come together as a time of Thanksgiving remembering what our country, how our country started and uh, the, per the problems that we went through, the settlers did, and things like that just then. And it's always celebrated with people coming together, usually around a meal, um, historically turkey is what we, th we think about, but whatever it might be, come together, eating together, fellowshipping together, and enjoying each other's company as we corporately and individually are thankful to God for what He's done. Uh, the wonderful thing about Thanksgiving is we get to participate in the holiday, and we don't simply remember those settles, settlers intellectually, uh, but we actually get together and talk about it, and think about it, and those kinds of things. Some, something similar happened within the church when we celebrate the baptism of a new disciple of Jesus. Uh, no, we don't get baptized every year, but... The rite of baptism itself, and that's R-I-T, right, of baptism itself, is very much participation and a commemoration of something rather than just a simple ritual as 
I'm afraid it has become in a lot of churches and a lot of Christians' lives. Just something, okay, we're having baptism today, that's it. And not really stopping to think, wow, yay, someone is proclaiming their life in Christ. It ought to be a humongous celebration each and every time we do it. Um, and then he asked some questions here, and one of them is, uh, why, what is your favorite holiday and why? You know, you think about that sometimes as we think about holidays. Is it Christmas because celebrating the birth of Jesus, or is it Thanksgiving because we take a time to think about it, or is it some other holiday, Easter maybe, as we celebrate Jesus doing the one thing that means the most to us, giving His life for each and every one of us. So as we think about holidays, it says, um, how would you summarize your earliest impressions of baptism as you think about celebrating holidays your first impressions of baptism in your life um, <clears throat> was it just something that happened and maybe you didn't even realize what was going on as a young person probably you know people were getting dunked in the water and maybe you thought hey that sounds fun swimming in the water right you know those kinds of things or did somebody take the time to explain to you what it really meant um, and what the symbolism was and how <clears throat> heavy or how weightful that is in the life of a Christian. As we take a deeper look at the practice of baptism within the Scriptures, we'll see that it's much more than a celebration or even, com even a commemoration. Indeed, baptism is our first act of obedience as disciples of Christ. And any time that we're doing an act of obedience for Christ, um, that is what I like to call reasonable for us, reasonable service. I mean, we all admit and we talk about what he's, God has done for us by sending His Son Jesus, how that means so much to us and we can never pay Him back. But we can do our part by being obedient to the Scripture and to His wishes. And that's reasonable in my mind and I hope it is in yours also. It's reasonable that I would at least pay attention to what He's saying in Scripture and do what He has to do since He's already done so much for me. So that's the way I think about it a lot of times when I think about uh, something, an ordinance or a uh, command given by God. It's, it's reasonable that I follow that command. It really is. Ritual washings and other forms of baptism were commonplace for the Jewish people before the launch of the early church. In fact, Jesus himself was baptized by John the Baptist at the beginning of his public ministry. <clears throat> and for that reason, the authors of the New Testament epistles included a number of instructions for incorporating the ordinance of baptism as a core practice of the church. And then we got a definition. Ordinance is a spiritual practice that demonstrates a person's faith in Christ. When we talk about uh, the two, two main ordinances in the Baptist church is baptism and the Lord's Supper. And both of those things, they demonstrate our faith in Christ. We do them just so everybody can say, yeah, I admit I had to have Jesus as a Savior. He is my Savior. I'm commemorating my faith in Him by doing these things. Uh, our Scripture is going to be in from Romans 6, verses 1 through 11 tonight. Romans 6, verses 1 through 11. Pretty good um, line of Scripture here, so just I'll, do, I'll read it best I can. What should we say then? Should we continue in sin that grace may multiply? Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Or are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Therefore we were buried with Him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with Him in the likeness of His death, we will certainly be in the likeness of His resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with Him so that the body ruled by sin might be rendered powerless so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin. Since a person who has died, who has died is freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. 
So you too consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Wow, that is a mouthful of wonderful scripture right there realizing that when we committed ourselves to Christ and followed Him in the commandment of the baptism, that we died to our old self just like He died to sin. And when we rose again out of it in symbolism, we rose to a new life in Christ just as He rose, defeating death, to eternal life in His Father. And we're right there with Him, right alongside with Him. So that, that should encourage all of us to know that that's actually what that's talking about and how wonderful that is for us. It says, what do you like best about these verses? Well, I had actually wrote down here, you, as I've said before, you get my opinion on all of this. You don't get to actually comment to me, but I'll try and stay just as scriptural as I can. I, the older I get, I try and try more not to give opinion. I try to just scripture. We're going to look at what scripture says. But it says, what do you like best about these scriptures? I love the idea, or the fact, not the idea. I love the fact that we don't have to be enslaved to sin. There's nothing about once we become a new person in Christ, sin has no control over us except what we give it. it, it we don't have to. Before our life in Christ, we don't have a choice. We have just, we have, our life has been about sin. And once we decide to follow Him, then He gives us a spirit of uh, prayer and a spirit of strength and power to where we can defeat that old self. And we don't have to be subject to it no more said, how do these verses contribute to your understanding of baptism? Well, they give us a better understanding of the symbolism. As I was talking about before, I don't know how you were when you were young, but even I was younger and even only to my um, grown-up years, I didn't really understand all about it. Not saying that I do now, but I sure have a better understanding and a better desire to be obedient to God in baptism and encourage others in the same act um, so that they can have a full life. In Christ, uh, we don't have to die to escape sin. Is one thing that it says to me. You know, we think about lost oh, sin is so bad. Well, we don't have to die in sin. We don't have to die to escape sin. Christ did that for us. We just have to live in Him. Is all we have to do, and we can do it through a life committed to Him in obedience to His Word. That's how we do it. Baptism is a picture of salvation. As we jump into Romans 6, we find Paul in the middle of a larger explanation about sin and salvation. In the previous chapter, Paul made the case that God's grace can provide forgiveness for all our sins, which is the key to eternal life with Christ. In the opening verses of chapter 6, Paul made it clear that disciples who have received this grace cannot continue the sinful patterns that, they once, that once defined them. It's in the process of making this point that Paul used the practice of baptism to paint a picture of our salvation through Christ. See here in verse three, uh, chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, Or are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Therefore, we're just, we were buried with Him in baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in the newness of life. Helping us realize that that's what that's all to mean. That's what the symbolism is about. It's not about what's going to happen through baptism. It's about what has happened in our life when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. We became a new creature. The baptism is just semblance of what took place during that time. We died to old self, going under the water. We rose in newness of life when we accepted Christ as our Savior. And He forgave us of our sins. When new disciples are baptized within the church, they are immersed in a body of water. They are brought down to the water just as Jesus was brought down in the grave after His death on the cross. Yet, like Jesus, the disciples don't remain in the water. They are raised out again in symbolic representation of Christ's resurrection. That's the key to Paul's wonderful reminder in verse 8. Now, if we die with Christ, we will believe that we will also live with Him. In this way, the practice of baptism serves as an object lesson that helps each disciple gain a better understanding of what it actually means to be saved. We're saved from sin and the grip that it had on our lives, the things that it causes us to do, the decisions that it causes us to make. 
is what we're freed from. What we're saved from is the grip of sin, which is of the devil. Sure is. That's what we've been saved from. It says, in what ways can salvation be compared to a type of death? Well, we become dead to parts of our old life. Not to say our whole old life was, we, everything we've done was bad, but we're just dead to what our focus was in our old life. Now our focus is Jesus Christ and the life that He has for us. And what are some ways you've experienced a newness of life as a disciple of Jesus? Well, I personally, I have a greater desire to please God than to just please myself is what it's done for me. As I think about more and more every day, as I think about what He did for me, then it just gives me a greater desire to please Him and do what, what He would have me to do. Baptism is a picture of salvation. It's a way to actively commemorate and celebrate our inclusion in the kingdom of God. But that's not all. The ordinance of baptism within the church is also a direct response to one of Jesus' most important commands. So far we've addressed baptism as a personal commemoration of a disciple's personal faith in Christ, which is true. However, it's equally true that baptism also serves as a public declaration of a person of disciple's salvation and desire to follow Christ as a member of the church. This public aspect of baptism is directly connected to the Great Commission which Jesus gave to His disciples after His resurrection from the grave. And that's in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you, and remember I am with you always to the end of the age. There's a lot in that little scripture right there. First of all, go. Don't sit still. Don't wait. Go. And make disciples. What has happened to you, deliver that message to others so it can happen to them also. And baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Explain to them these things. That they have the power of God within them to overcome their old self. And not, and not be defeated by sin. And then teach them. Teach them to observe everything that He has commanded. And then remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stay with you. I ain't leaving you. All those kinds of things. That should be a humongous comfort to us as we're witnessing to others, as we're struggling, anything. Just remember, God is right there with us all the time. How far, how long, forever, to the end of the age, not going to leave us. He's there with us, and we can take comfort in that. Note that Jesus' words were a, here were a commission, not a suggestion. Therefore, the baptism of new disciples is not optional. It is a command. It's something we should do. It says, how do you respond to the truth that baptism is a command from Jesus? Very serious. It shows obedience. And after all, that's what God is saying, you trust me, Right? You trust me with life. You trust that I died for you and I paid the price for your sin. Well, trust me completely, will you? Trust that all I'm telling you is good for you and be obedient in that. The practice of baptism continues to benefit the church in many ways. For example, baptism is a shared experience among all disciples of Christ. It helps Christians join together as the body of Christ. Paul made that clear when he wrote, For we all were baptized by one Spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all given one Spirit to drink. Public baptisms are also a fantastic opportunity for evangelism as new disciples stand to declare in front of all witnesses their intention to follow Christ. And that is the truth. When there's a baptism Sunday, it even had some words in here about possibly be a good time to invite people to come to church with you. Hey, we're having a baptism church at church Sunday. I think you'd really enjoy it. Won't you come see it? Won't you? And they say, well, what's that all about? Well, let me tell you what it's all about. I mean, if you're looking for a door of entrance, that's a perfect way 
for a door to be open when somebody asks you a question. And then you can just talk away, hopefully, and, and answer and explain and those kinds of things. So uh, that's something for us to really be thinking about. When we have another baptism here, it would be a great time to invite people and say, hey, I'm having a baptism at church Sunday. It's really going to mean a lot to some people, and they'd probably love it if you'd show up. Well, okay. You know, somebody, you never know. Somebody say, okay, I'd be glad to come, but hey, what's that all about? Or hey, do you understand what baptism is about? You might even ask them. So it'd be a good way to evangelism, possibly, also. So, um, what's your next step regarding baptism? Have you followed Christ in baptism? Have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Do you understand what we're talking about here tonight? The importance of these things. A life without Christ is a life lost. A life with end here on earth and then an eternity in hell. But a life with Christ is a never-ending life in eternity in heaven. And also a life filled with obedience knowing that you're going to receive a reward for it one day in heaven. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Hope it's meant as much to you as it has to me. Thank you so much. Love you.